Anyone who knows me knows that I love to talk about my daughter. I love to say her name. Um, we do fundraisers. Um, I light a candle in her room every night since she's passed. Keeping this memory alive, especially with his daughter. Um, every time I have her, we look through photo albums and talk about him. She's getting to the point where she's telling me that's not good enough. She wants him back. Obviously, I can't change that. My name is Heidi Soba. My name is Sue. Shanna Lehman. I'm Amanda Hartwig. This is my husband, Wayne Hartwig. And we are the founders of Bo's Heavenly Clubhouse. Bo's Heavenly Clubhouse is a nonprofit charity organization that is 501c3 certified. We specifically take care of parents that have endured the death of their child. 2017, February 27th, I had my twins, Porter and Adeline. They were born seven weeks early. Um, spent a month in the NICU, and once they were able to eat on their own, they came home. Well, Ryan was a person, he loved life. Um, he was a truck driver, which he absolutely loved as well. He was a father to a seven-year-old girl. He never met a stranger, really, because um, he became friends with them right away. He taught his daughter that no matter what goes on in their life, no matter how bad they think it is, there's always people who have it worse, and he was always there to help. He always had to be on an adventure. We'd always have to be doing something. and. I remember my favorite parts of reflecting on Bo's life were with him and his big sister. They would have so much fun together. He would make her laugh until she peed her pants. Yeah. <laughs> like, True story. They were so perfect together. Alexis was diagnosed with brain cancer when she was nine years old in 2012. Um, the process is how it is with anybody who has cancer. Four years of continuous doctor's appointments, surgeries, not knowing how long we have with her. Fourth of July, it was 8.50 a.m. and I went to go get my son Porter up, get him ready, we had a busy day, parade, fireworks, candy, everything. So got him up and then I thought, well, I'll just get Adeline up. So I went in the bedroom to get her up and she was gone. A year ago on November 18th, he um, decided he couldn't take life anymore. He um, disappeared actually for almost three days. We searched for him and searched for him. and. Almost three days later, on November 20th, he was found um, after taking his own life. So we knew that Alexis was um, failing and fast. And so we went um, Friday before she passed to the funeral home, thinking that we might have still a couple weeks to plan her funeral because I said it is going to be the biggest and most outrageous funeral you've ever been to. Everything under the sun is going to be there. Um, not a funeral, a celebration of life. And she passed away that Tuesday. So before we even had our second appointment to make sure that everything was in the clear, she had passed away. And I crept into his room, tried to surprise him. I got our then five-year-old daughter up for school. She was in kindergarten. I told her to get her clothes and go into the bathroom and get dressed for the day. And his bedroom was right next to the bathroom. I can remember tiptoeing in the dark, reaching over the crib and feeling him cold and stiff. My name is PJ Schobel and I'm the Dodge County Medical Examiner. When a child dies, the medical examiner's office is involved um, and is first of all notified of the death. So what my job is, is to meet with the family, 
to meet with medical professionals and I do an interview with the family, I do an interview with the medical professionals, and I do a basic examination of the, of the child um, at wherever they've passed away. My name is Dan Kepsel. I've been a funeral director with the Kepsel Funeral Homes and my family for over 10 years, and I've been fortunate enough to serve uh, the families of Dodge County. I was introduced through, uh, to Bo's Heavenly Clubhouse through, of course, Bo's parents. Uh, unfortunately, we, we all went through a journey together when they lost their son. And to see uh, how remarkably strong they are as a family, uh, their faith, and uh, more importantly, their love for one another, and uh, keeping the, the memory of their son alive has been more than inspirational uh, to myself in me being a dad, and uh, also to the countless number of families in the short period that they've been, they've been able to help folks. As part of my meeting with the family, one of the things that I often do is I do what's called a, a reconstruction. Um, we meet with the family at their house, um, and we actually use a doll, and we, we ask the family to show us uh, where the child was when they died, um, how they were, in, in the case of smaller children, how they were put to bed, for example, how they were found when they were found the next morning. Um, and we use that doll for that reconstruction. Um, as time goes on, I'm also the person who will order an autopsy. I don't do an autopsy if one's necessary. Um, I get the results from the pathologist who does it. I'm kind of the liaison then between the pathologist and the family, uh, providing them with updates as I get them. Um, and this can be a very lengthy process. Uh, generally will take months to, to finish. Now on top of a funeral, there's more people than just the capsule funeral home that are involved. For example, there are florists, there are newspaper articles, you know, for example, obituaries, there are uh, cemetery expenses. All these people continue to charge because it is a business. But us at the funeral home, we, we provide that service. It's something that most funeral homes do um, and it's something that all funeral homes should do. So outside of Bo's Heavenly Clubhouse, we work with Angel Care, which is a corporation that makes breathing monitors for infants. When somebody contacts me, it's usually a family member or a friend of a person that they know that has endured a tragedy. It is so important to have those immediately fragile moments be in communication with somebody else who gets it. After the reach out and after I have talked to the family members, uh, we then figure out whether or not their child was under the age of 18. If they are under the age of 18, we offer financial support for our local area. So immediately in Wisconsin, the surrounding counties to Dodge County. We coordinate with all funeral homes. I am in direct contact with the personal funeral director of each individual funeral. Um, and then we find out the financial status of what the funeral looks like. Um, our standard donation amount for each funeral is $250. PJ was our medical examiner for Bo, um, and we continue to work with him and the infant death coordinator of Wisconsin. Um, both of these officials have so much importance because these are the first ones on the scene. These are the first ones that have our cards in their pocket and say, hey, I know where you can get help. I know where there's people who will support you and love you through this. You're not alone. And she looked at me and she said, is my daddy dead? And I said, yeah, honey, he is. But I was always the one that fixed things. I was always the one that held us together. I was always the one that pulled us through and made things work. And I couldn't do that this time, and I couldn't change things, and I couldn't make things better. You know, I lost her, but I also lost a huge piece of me and who I was. To be honest, it, it took a few days. You, you felt like you were dreaming that this was just a bad dream, you know, and you hear people use that, that phrase, but that's honestly what it was. You're gonna close your eyes, you're gonna wake up, and this is just a nightmare. I guess after seeing your child suffer for so long and fight so hard, it was a relief 
to see her at peace. As much as I want her here, and I would give my own life to have her here, I know that she is with wonderful people up in heaven who love her so much, and that's just what I think about. That's what helps to get me through the day. You know, after we had to leave the hospital without our son, and we had to return home to where it happened. It was mandatory at that point that we review and reenact what happened with the baby doll. And going back into his room and seeing that crib and seeing the way he, he was laying, um, you almost feel criminalized. You almost feel like you did something wrong. And I remember thinking, we cannot be the only ones that feel this way. Wouldn't it be easier to not do Bose Heavenly Clubhouse, to not have to think about that day and those struggles? Wouldn't it be easier to not do that? You know, it, it goes two ways because uh, it is a lot of work. Uh, uh, you know, we love, we love what we do. But we found also that the more you talk about your child, the better it makes you feel. You know, they, they, Bo is impacting so many lives. You know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have met all these families. Absolutely. You know, I, I would give everything up to have him back, but I wouldn't change what we're doing for the world. You know, it's, it, it is a lot of work, but it's worth it. I think what Bo's Heavenly Clubhouse does for the community the best is a support network. I think uh, up until this organization existed, there really wasn't uh, anything as in depth uh, to help families, grieving families, young parents. You know, there's so much emphasis put on grief support for uh, cancer, for you know, you name it, and I think that's important too. But I think this really fit a niche that maybe our community didn't have. Uh, everything that they do is from start to finish complete. They've done the research, they have the folks on staff that have gone through these things and are there not to tell you how they felt, but also to tell you that they're here for you, that they want to listen to you, that they want to be a part of your journey as well. And if you need them at any time, they're going to be there for you, even down to the financial implications that happen when somebody loses a young person. There are costs that are involved. And sometimes younger families, like every young family, starting out, finances are a concern. So to have these folks uh, open up more than their hearts uh, in, the, in the way of donations and things like that is remarkable. It provides that support mechanism that families go through um, or that those families need. People who are experiencing that same loss um, so that they don't feel that they're going through this alone. And so Amanda here at Bose Heavenly Clubhouse reached out to me a couple times <laughs> and I kept saying I just don't know if I'm ready I just don't know if I'm ready because I think I was afraid to admit at the moment what I felt was defeat it's been the best thing for me I have learned to understand grief better and that most everything I'm going through they're going through too and I'm not so different than other people I'm different than my friends who aren't experiencing it but all of us are going through the same grief, no matter how we lost our children. Every time we come, whether we've been here last week or six months ago, it's just like walking into that family. They hug you, they welcome you by name. We couldn't ask for better lifelong friends. And it's not easy walking in to a group of people to talk about losing a child. At first it was really just Amanda and I would call her hysterical at I don't even know what days and you know hours of the night and she was always there. There was, there was no judgment, it, there was compassion and in that moment that was exactly what I needed. I guess my message would be kind of what I told myself internally at the time was your child is always with you 
to put out there about mental illness and suicidal ideation that there is help. There's no reason to be ashamed. Bo's Heavenly Clubhouse has been the best part of my grieving process. Because if you don't take that first step, grief is really difficult and you need those people around you. My biggest thing would be to say swallow your pride. You have to talk about it, you have to get it out. If you bottle it up, it'll eat you alive. Parents, if you are looking for a safe haven, you can contact me directly at 262-388-4290. If you're ready to take action now, you can head on over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Bo's Heavenly Clubhouse or visit our website at bowsheavenlyclubhouse.com. Please contact us for volunteer opportunities. We are always looking for compassionate help.